everybody welcome back to a wild popcorn thank you for clicking on this video if you guys are new my name is stephanie um so a few months ago i saw a video i believe it was sean chandler if i'm not mistaken um that did this um particular type of video um i thought it was fun i noticed that some other people did it as well but i believe he actually is the one that kind of started this little trend that i'm finally doing it little disclaimer it may seem like it's 32 movies but it's actually 27 please 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 don't fight me on that it's it's that's enough with this intro because it's going to be a very very long video so let's go ahead and get on with it so the first few years is going to be just kind of what i like now because obviously i was too little to actually really enjoy something so let's go ahead and start it off 1987 would be dirty dancing because i mean you just don't put baby in a corner so 1988 would be who framed roger rabbit i still have the vhs on the VHS, my sister, one of my older sisters, actually put on there out of order. I think at the beginning of the movie, I was a lot of tracking involved. For the young kids, you're not going to know what that is. Honestly, I didn't even realize the inappropriateness until I literally saw it a few years ago. And I'm just like, oh my god. And I'm watching it, and I'm just like... Yes, like Looney Tune there at the end, the crazy one, the one that was murdering everybody. I um, mean, he did like freak me out, and I think I may have had nightmares, but it never stopped me from watching it. 1989 would, of course, be The Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid is probably my favorite princess, to be honest with you. My favorite villain comes on there too, Ursula. I think she's absolutely amazing. One of my best friends gave me a copy. She had two copies of The Little Mermaid. I was so excited. So much I love you. Now you see me. And then you know when Sebastian is like running for his life because that chef's trying to get him. Oh, I love it. I love it. So 1990, my favorite movie of that year was, but of course, Home Alone. I mean, ah, who doesn't love Home Alone? If you don't love Home Alone, I don't know if we can be friends. I mean, I still take you as a friend, but I don't know. I mean, I want to tell you my secrets because. I don't need to explain Home Alone. Right, let's let's go. 1991. All right. So this one was also another one, like I said, really hard because my favorite right now, The Adams Family, and I I loved it at that time too. But honestly, it was probably till later on in life that I could really just say that I really started to really love it. For crying out loud, I named one of my dogs Wednesday. My favorite that was that year, 1991, was Father of the Bride. I think that's actually the movie that I can recall. Um, where I kind of fell in love with Steve Martin. All right, 1992 would be Buffy the Vampire Slayer. This was before, it was, yeah, it was before the show came on, which I actually also love the show. The show obviously was completely different from this as far as the tone. Obviously in the show, it was more of a darker uh, series. Unlike this movie right here, it was just, it was just so funny. It was so corny. Such a 90s film. Late Luke Perry came on this movie. Christy Swanson, I believe that's how you say her name. Larry Swing came on this movie. David Arquette came on this too. As did um, Ben Affleck had like a little small part in it. Let's go ahead and move on to 1993. Look you guys. This was very, very difficult because two of my favorite movies, Halloween movies, you might know by this, by me saying that, which ones they might be. Literally like that, like that much, like separated like seriously at least between nightmare before christmas and hocus pocus i freaking love nightmare before christmas back in 93 i don't really recall watching nightmare before christmas hocus pocus i mean who doesn't love hocus pocus love everything about it this is actually the first movie that i recall actually going to theaters to go and watch the first movie that my mom did not fall asleep watch she's always like las tres brujitas like the three little witches so 1994 would be the santa claus tim allen kills santa claus consequences now you're the santa claus we saw him grow as santa claus we loved him even more i mean the movies did get a little bit more ridiculous as it goes on but the original i mean i to me from all of them i honestly do prefer the first part of course we get what is it three four movies three movies right Wait, or is it four? No, I think it's three. All right, so 95, we had seven, we had Bad Boys, we had Toy Story, Jumanji, Outbreak, um, such great movies. But ultimately, the one that was my favorite at that time was Clueless. Because I'm such a girl. It's so the 90s. 
and I love Cher. And like, whatever, as if you know you love that movie too. But my favorite now is completely different, okay? So like by Felicia. So 1996, this was gonna be just an honorable mention because this particular movie I loved then, I love it now. You can't tell me shit about it because that's like, this I think it's where the start of my like dumbass movie obsession began. I mean, because this is a ridiculous movie. It knows it's ridiculous. It knows it's over the top. It knows how inappropriate it is. But I love it. And I love the Wayans brothers. And Marlon is like one of my boyfriends because I have like so many celebrity boyfriends. This movie is Don't Be a Minute to South Central While Drinking Your Juice in the Hood. I know you guys, you're probably like, what the fuck? but I loved it. Me and my cousin. We would watch it literally every Saturday after we finished cleaning the course. So we were always very careful. And whenever we would hear my mom coming home from work, we would be like, that's her, that's her. My all time favorite scene is when the uh, shy girl um, is with uh, Marlon in the um, post office truck. And then he's all like, yeah, I want you to get crazy. She's all like, all right. I can get crazy. All right, motherfucker, let's get it on. <laughs> I love it. Oh my God. All right, so 1997. Not Titanic, it is not Selena. I know a lot of people are gonna be like, it's gonna be one of those two. It's between Face Off and Con Air, you guys. I love both of these movies. It was really, really difficult. We get Nicolas Cage, where he was like literally at his best acting at this time and he came out with both of these movies in the same year i mean nicholas cage now like for all the younger kids don't judge him by this because now he does like shit work but back in the day his work was better ultimately it kind of had to come down to the story of which one was more interesting and it had to be face off because they're literally taking the face off and they're like surgically removing the face between Nicolas Cage and John Travolta. I mean, these two together, I loved them. They were awesome. It was great. 1998, we have Armageddon. We have Bruce Willis, Ben Affleck, Owen Wilson, Liv Tyler, Billy Bob Thornton. I mean, it, honestly, I didn't realize just how ridiculous this story is until like later on in life. Basically, there's this big ass asteroid that's gonna come into Earth atmosphere and it's going to basically like, you know, extinct us. Kind of like, think about it like the dinosaurs, right? There's gonna come explode and we're, we're done with. So the people at NASA were like, we're gonna have to get up to this meteor, drill a hole, put a bomb and make it explode. What they decided to do was, well, let's find the best oilers who have no space training but you know regardless it doesn't stop it for me my favorite favorite movie and honestly there at the end i always cry at the end all right so 1999 right before we get to the white 2k my favorite movie of that year was runaway bride julia roberts and richard Gere reunited again Lee, julia's character can't quite get through marrying somebody um she's been engaged i believe it was like four times four or five times yet i still can't get engaged once makes it all the way to the wedding date and like runs away literally that's why it's called runaway bride but it's not my favorite at the moment and i'm only saying this now and i'm not just putting it up here because i absolutely lutely love 10 things i hate about you the only reason it's not my favorite at that particular time was because i didn't see that movie till later on in life as well year 2000 my favorite movie of that year was little nikki because like who doesn't love a good adam sandler movie now I, i'm not that fond of his movies um kind of like with marlon i don't know what happened at some particular year they kind of started making like shitty movies or like mediocre he's the son of the devil and then we end up finding out spoiler alert um he's half a uh, demon half angel and his mom is actually reese witherspoon well the brothers were not very happy with the dad they escaped hell the dad's like dying because you know they froze they froze it they froze hell so they you know all the souls can come in which is what you know keeps the devil like up and running so nikki of course has to go to earth and 
where else but New York City and has to track down his brothers and get them inside the flask. Get in the flask, get in the flask. An obsession with Popeye's chicken. If only they were in there now with the whole Popeye's like chicken sandwich, I wonder, would be nice, right? To kind of have like a, a sequel of Little Nicky and like incorporate the Popeye's chicken sandwich. Give this video a like if you agree. <laughs> now, 2001, my favorite movie of that year would be I Am Sam. Um, this is another one that would make me cry every single time that I watch it. So this movie just kind of really hits close to home just because my brother does have special needs. Sean Penn and uh, Michelle Pfeiffer come on this. They're trying to take the kid away from, from him because they, of course, don't feel that he's uh, capable of taking care of this kid. All right, so 2002, that would be Eight Mile, which stars my number one boyfriend, Eminem. Also, we have Mikhail Pfeiffer in this, uh, Kim Basinger, Exhibit, Athena McKay, and of course, the late Brittany Murphy. Moving right along to 2003, and this is with my husband, Johnny Depp. Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. Jack Sparrow is probably my favorite character that Johnny Depp has portrayed. I love the whole Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. Well, minus David Jones Locker. That, I, I wasn't fond of that one. So I can rewatch all of them except that one. For 2014 would be Jake Gyllenhaal's The Day After Tomorrow. This climate changing like disaster movie, you know, deal that basically what Leonardo DiCaprio is trying to warn us about. Of course, again, it happens in New York because everything happens in New York. Emily Rawson, um, she's on here as well, and Dennis Quaid, which is uh, Jake's dad. Uh, Jake's dad um, actually works with like the weather service and does stuff with the weather. So he knows what's happening and everything. So while uh, Jake is in New York um, at this um, like school event because he's like super smart triathlon or some shit like that um it's kind of where the weather kind of starts changing and, and shifting and uh they basically end up getting stuck there i still don't understand though how the wolves survived i don't think we ever saw any other animals besides the wolves that i could wol wolves 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 am i saying that right I, I don't think it's coming out right we never saw them again so they probably did die there at the end i don't know so 2005, the year that I graduated, a lot, but I'm still 27, remember that. My favorite of the year was actually Deborah Messing's rom-com, The Wedding Date, um, which also starred Amy Adams as the sister. Deborah Messing's character, oh, actually, I think her name was Kat, if I'm not mistaken, um, hires uh, Dermot Muldoni's uh, character to be her date for Amy Adams' uh, wedding. One, to not go to the wedding alone. And then two, which was most importantly, was to make her ex- jealous and it didn't quite work out because we have another little twist going on there and all right you guys so 2006 this is probably where I can kind of pinpoint where my real true love and passion for film really started happening I, th this movie is the one that really made me look at the overall picture of everything that's involved in a movie will be uh, Guillermo del Toro's um, Pan's Labyrinth. Everything about this movie I think is absolutely beautiful. This movie, if you haven't seen it, um, it does have subtitles because it is uh, it's una, una película española. It's a Spaniard movie. Ophelia goes into the mystical goes into the mythical land of Pan's Labyrinth. Even over there is so cool. I mean, everything about it, that creepy little deal where you know when that wakes up when. She starts eating off the, the grapes when they tell her, don't eat nothing. You know, she's kind of like coming at her. I mean, that was kind of creepy. She's living with her mom and now her stepdad, who is a soldier. They were the time that they're fighting against like the Nazis and they kind of have them stationed in this particular uh, location, like flush out all the rebels. Um, and the stepdad, he's like absolutely horrible. Like seriously, um, he ends up killing this um, man who, um stutters basically at one point it's like look i'll let you live if you can count to three without stuttering i really don't want to ruin this movie for anybody who has not seen it but from all the movies that i'm mentioning on here if you haven't seen none of them this one for sure i full 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 on recommend for you guys to watch it 2007 was enchanted i mean 
this is another one that I absolutely love the songs in here um, the story yes it's, it's cheesy Amy Adams comes on it she's just such an amazing actress I mean she literally can play like everything you guys like seriously like you guys remember Cruel Intentions too I mean she was like like this really like uh, person in uh, sharper objects she was even great as being damn Dick Cheney's wife she's just such a phenomenal actress James Marston comes on this as well so does Patrick um, Dempsey fact that we got an animated I think this is kind of where like live action animation maybe kind of first started off I'm not, I may be completely mistaken but this is kind of the first thing that kind of comes to mind I mean she was cartoon and the evil witch you know brings her into the real world where New York <laughs> how she just like starts cutting up all the curtains and the rugs and makes damn dresses like this that cleanup scene though was kind of creepy especially when it came to the roaches and like the rats like uh, but like can I go no, I would go like that in the damn bird would probably, probably come and like poop on my head. We are in 2008 now and woo woo! Baby Mama is my favorite movie of the year, even to the day. Not as ridiculous as my other like comedy movies, you know, like nothing can beat like Don't Be A Menace, I know that. Uh, but I, 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 like I said, I love comedy movies. Comedy movies are like the top of my list. Of course, like Amy and, and, and Tina are just like a fantastic duo. So I'm clean. I'm clean. 2009 is where the official obsession of the Twilight fanatic happened. That's right. I was a Twilight fan. I was Team Jacob. Team Edward people, don't at me. I know he didn't get Bella, but you know what? He got the daughter, so whatever. When I was actually reading, you guys. See, I know how I am about my Audible books. New Moon, that was, I was in love. That's where I officially became in love and obsessed with the Twilight franchise. I still enjoy the Twilight movies, uh, but I'm not a big time fanatic like I was uh, back in 2009. And now we're going into 2010, and of course we're continuing with the Twilight Saga, Eclipse. Um, again, Loved it. Still Team Jacob. I think this might actually be my favorite of the saga. I mean, we got that big huge battle. We finally got um, Victoria thinking she was gonna get her revenge on Bella. And that's when uh, poor Jacob like got crushed by that damn vampire newborn. And then his heart got even more crushed when Bella told him no you and I will never be because he even said I want all the crushing to be done at once um, when Jacob finally got to kiss Bella twice because the first time remember she she got he got punched and then she kind of like broke her hand a little bit also where we found out a little bit of uh Edward's past of how he was beforehand we're moving on to 2011 and no it's not breaking down part one part of the year was but of course fast five which i feel like it might be a lot of people's favorite um this might be the only one that i actually get people to agree and be like finally you said something that we like i feel like this is kind of where the series they already knew what was kind of working, what wasn't working, and they're like, let's try to push it even further to the more extravagant of deals. I'm going to be in uh, Rio, we're going to be stealing from this big bad guy, and we're going to like steal this big ass heavy safe, and we're just going to be like getting away in these two like cars that could they even really realistically carry that safe I mean I don't know I mean they made it work but is it the kind of like ridiculousness that is the Fast and the Furious now this is kind of where it officially started where they really took it like over the top and I was here for it and you were here for it we were all here for it brother-in-law loves this movie as well if I didn't have this on here I feel like he would probably like uh beat my ass and we're coming down to 2002 and we're Back to the Twilight Saga, Breaking Dawn, part two. Loved it. Bella is officially a vampire. We have a kid. Alice and Jasper, like, left. We get the Voltorn try to come and, like, 
kill uh poor Renesme. You know, obviously he's like scared like how long does she have to live? Like at what age, you know, from her rapid growth is she going to stop growing and like how much time is she actually going to have? And now Bella knows that Jacob imprinted on the baby and of course she's not very happy about this. Um the whole situation, like what the hell? She's like day old, you're like wanting to marry my kid now? Like what the hell's wrong with you? Uh that whole scene of course was super funny. That ending fight scene, like <gasps> Oh my god, I was like panicking. I won't give you spoilers because you must know the panic there at the end. And then like my sister's like, oh, I knew because I was in the book. I went, oh my god, you didn't tell me? Like my heart was literally racing this whole time. Like finally it's like calming down when we find out what we found out. But like I could have had a heart attack. 2013 would be but of course Captain Phillips it's based on a true story that stars Tom Hanks really this like cargo ship is going through like pirate territory and they get hijacked and um, I mean he handles it very well and honestly doesn't break till there at the end 2014 is where we got John Wick now John Wick I didn't watch till later on in life I think part two had already came out when I saw John Wick the whole concept of the movie when I first heard about it, it seemed ridiculous, did it call my attention. My absolute favorite movie of 2014 would be A Fault in Our Stars. Another one that every time I watch it, it just always makes me cry. So before like, I give you my top five, please let me know down below what your favorite movies are of every year you've been born. Or if you don't want to go all the way through it, maybe the last like 10 years, maybe the last five years. 2015 is to give it to the relic because I mean this finally gave Leonardo his very well deserved um, Oscar of Tom Hardy as well great movie moving right along to 2016 um, originally it was between two animated movies but when I kind of went back and really thought about it and I was like okay which one would I watch it would be Keanu another ridiculous movie because the story of this is absolutely ridiculous I mean everything that they go through for a damn cat. I mean, it's a cute ass cat. Um, by the way, um, I actually call my sister's cats Keanu. Um, one, because she got a cat after the, I saw the movie and I was like, oh, I'm naming your cat Keanu. These are not their names, by the way, neither one of them. Uh, but it was like an orange cat. But then she ended up getting another cat that was great, that was like Keanu. And I went, oh my God, this is Keanu. But like, I can't call him Keanu because I already called this other one Keanu. Keanu number two, which is probably why her cats don't like me because I don't I don't call them by their actual name. So 2017, I would have to actually give it to Logan. I really loved how they really just kind of closed off um, his story, even uh, Professor Xavier's story. Um, and then we had like this new uh, young girl who was like mini Wolverine and she was like a freaking badass. 2018, you guys, we're just about there. My favorite for the year is actually Green Book, which actually possibly are, shouldn't be a shocker because I think my favorites throughout this whole video are probably shockers for a lot of people. Um, a lot of people were not very happy with this winning best picture. I was very, very happy with the winning best picture. I was like, this is not gonna win. Roma's gonna win. Or um, what was the other one that was the top contender? Oh crap, I don't know. I, it was Roma or this other movie that at this point I could not quite remember what it was. But I was kind of going more towards Roma. So finally you guys, we have made it. 2019. Before I give you my favorite, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up if there's been at least one movie that you also like. And we're obviously going to disagree, but there's nothing wrong with that. But let's not be nasty in the comments down below. So with that said, my favorite movie of 2019 be Toy Story 4. I was really debating. I, I, I it was between two. And I was really, really debating. I was like a lot of people that I was like, what the heck? Why are we getting another Toy Story? You know, we finished Toy Story 3 in such a beautiful way. I mean, that was the end of Andy's chapter. They sent them off to college. You know, the, the toys had like a, a happy ending, what we thought so with um, little girls named Molly, right? You know, that that was gonna be the end, you know, it's very sad, I cried. What I really enjoyed about this one is that we kinda got a conclusion, an ending to Woody. No, Woody doesn't die of him with his family because he finally decides to be basically what a lot of people would say selfish, but really is him wanting to go with his love. You know, he already, 
let her go once to be with the family and you know he finally felt that he's done what he can with his family and it's he has his opportunity to now be with Bo again you know they hadn't crossed paths in years what were the odds of you know him being with Bo again so she asked him to be part of her world and on this adventure and stay with her the journey that they went to to finally get to that conclusion i feel was done so good i mean they obviously you have your ups and downs throughout the beginning the you know throughout the movie hopefully they don't do a part five just because without woody i don't think that there is really a story and also uh, one thing that i didn't quite like about this is that they made buzz seem more like dumb like I don't remember him being such like an airhead and like not all up there um, in the previous uh, movies. But in this movie, I felt that he, I don't know if, because I saw it in Spanish. So I don't know in the way that he was translated, they make him into an airhead. Like let me know down below if in the English version, he kind of gave you guys kind of like that airhead moment because i hope you enjoyed this video it was really fun to do um, it was very difficult to kind of narrow narrow it down on what my favorites were before you click out of it don't forget to give it a like subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet don't forget to hit that notification bell so you'll be notified each time that i post something new yeah but just remember that was just 27 videos so until next time i'll be seeing you guys at concessions bye